Okay, everyone is seated on the upper deck except me. I don't count, I'm a trained professional. Um, also, as I said earlier, the transmission is having issues on board this bus. And in fact, this is off the record, but perhaps this bus was not actually supposed to go on the road today. So, we, I think we misread the paperwork. We saw something said satisfactory, actually you might have said unsatisfactory. It is what it is. Uh, now how this amounts, uh, where this affects you guys, is uh, when we start moving, there might be a bit of a jolt. So, <laughs> hold on. Do you guys know what the motto of our city is? It is Philadelphia the city. Brotherly love. Brotherly love. Brotherly. Yes. Now do you guys know where that motto comes from? Comes from the name Philadelphia itself, which is two Greek words put together. Phila, meaning love. Adelphia, meaning brothers. Since the city you put it all together, it is the city of brotherly love. I will summarize basically the um, the typical uh, tourist. Philadelphia is summed up in just a matter of words: Liberty Bell, cheesesteak, Rocky, and that's it. Let's give Andrew our driver a big, big round of applause. Thank you, Andrew. On the right side here, this is the Federal Reserve Bank of Philadelphia. Back for savings and loans, banks get their cash money. Eight billion dollars in its heavily fortified basement. Also here, there's a free exhibit called Money in Motion. Folks, and the functions of the Federal Reserve. Now, if you uh, take the Money in Motion exhibit, the enemy are given a bag full of money. The money is shredded. It's no longer legal tender. Well, while we're paused here, it is worth noting the Trunk and Arrow Theater these days, performing many from us the rock, punk, and male hip hop groups. Who's been in the Trunk and Arrow? Raise your hand. Looks like the vast majority of you folks. Pretty good place, pretty good place. <laughs> now, do you guys know that uh, a hit single was recorded at the Trunk and Arrow July 2nd of 1990? The group Tesla, uh, the forefront of the Unplugged movement. This was actually about two years before uh, Eric Clapton recorded his uh, Unplugged album. They recorded their five-man acoustical jam album there with the hit single from it. The hit single cover of Signs by the five-man electrical band recorded right there at the Truck and Arrow Theater. Now the convention center here connected to the old Reading Railroad Terminal. Now the Reading Railroad Terminal here, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the terminal market here, has been used in the filming of some movies, used in the, the filming of the movie uh, Blowout with uh, John Travolta, John Lithgow. John Lithgow plays a psycho and picks up an ice pick from a fish vendor later does some nasty work. You might need a push, okay. <laughs> Uh, we, do, we, do we need to push it into to the next uh, block there? I'm going to talk with the driver. Charles, give us an interlude. Charles, actually Charles Cohen, kind of gave me the idea for, for this thing. We we're actually in the parking lot of a fish show in 2009. So he's like, well, why don't you try to do uh, some kind of performance uh, on one of these buses? And I was like, you know, the pay system's not really up to snuff. Uh, and then we, we upgraded the pieces. We got better speakers, and then we also got uh, power generators. We actually have plugs. So I'm like, wait, we actually run some equipment off these things. So over the last couple of months, I started testing stuff out, see like, well, what could they actually take? You know, could you actually plug in like instruments and whatnot and not have stuff smoking and whatnot? And so far, so good, as you can see. This is the inaugural run. Well, not so far so good. I mean, we are, you know, we have a broken transmission, but at least the PA system sounds good. So uh, this just in, 
Uh, we are going to try. We're trying to reach one of our associates to drive another bus down. Uh, in the meantime, Ms. Birdie Bush here is going to set up. She's going to play us a few songs. If anyone's confused, we are waiting for another bus to arrive. And since I'm kind of one for honesty, I have to admit this might be one of the strangest situations I've ever been in in my entire life. Especially musically. This next song is about Philadelphia. That's it. There's these competing forces, and we're going to make it happen. We have about 20, 25 minutes left. And we're ready to go. Andrew, just drive us someplace. We're to our left side. This is where Mannequin was filmed. Yeah! 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 Now, that's the show where Mannequin magic comes to life on level of the store employees. Perhaps one of the is lesser cinematic achievements. Also, the movie spawned the hit song by the reconstituted Jefferson Airplanes, to be known as Starship. Nothing's gonna stop us now. And in fact, nothing is gonna stop us now, because here we are. Yeah. If you hear a bell ringing in the air, you might think, oh, it's gonna be in City Hall. There's no bells on the City Hall's tower. There is a bell on the old Philadelphia National Bank building. Now has the McCormick and Schmicks on the ground floor. <laughs> now, it was not on that particular ship, but it was on another Iowa-class battleship that share Saying one of her comeback hits from, I'm thinking like oh, ladies. Yeah. Yeah. What, what was the song? Like like turn back time, yeah. yeah. And she straddled the 16 inch guns of a uh, ship that was. government shutdown so the real independence hall actually closed during the government shutdown and we're wondering does that mean they turn off the lights because the symbolic value of that is just intense if they actually turn off the light on the liberty bell because oh it's usually lit up God. you know all day and all night now the thing about uh, independence hall much of you guys know is that tower is a reconstruction from 1828 now the tower is all wood so it was built in the 1740s and after decades of all the wind and the rain, it got all rotted out. So by 1776, it was in really bad shape. Now, there's actually a debate whether the Liberty Bell actually rang in 1776 for the first public reading of the Declaration of Independence. Some people say it didn't ring because the tower is such bad shape that if it did ring, it, it, it could perhaps collapse. So 
from either late 1776 or early 1777. The tower was dismantled, the bell was kept elsewhere, but finally rebuilt in 1828. The redesigned tower, there it is, lit up, the bell. The bell. The Woo! bell. Lit up. Government isn't over. This gives us hope, perhaps. There is still government. Also lit up the room where the Declaration of Independence was signed. Or not. So the, the tower was rebuilt 1828, designed by William Strickland. He altered the design slightly, put in, instead of, uh, there used to be big windows in the tower, but instead he put in the big clock faces. And there's a bell up there, it still rings every hour on the hour, that's the centennial bell for Philadelphia, 1876, for the nation's 100th anniversary. Mind your head to the left side, low branches. And we, here we are uh, again where we started. So thanks again so much, you guys were great sports. Um, we got high on diesel fumes, we laughed, oh we cried, we drank some beer. Right there. Uh, it was a great time. You learned something. Hey, thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. This was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. Thanks so much, guys. Thank you, Sebastian. Thank you for being so thoughtful. This was a great night. We, in fact, broke on through to the other side. Here we are. Yeah. Got there.